sun is just coming up. The windows of the room are shut, but through them the cherry trees can be seen in blossom. It's May, but in the orchard there is morning frost. Nursery. 
must drink my coffee. Thank you, Fierce. Thank you. I am so glad I found you still alive. <laughs> the day before yesterday. <laughs> yeah, very well. <laughs> I better leave for car car soon after four. What a nuisance. <laughs> I'd like to have a good look at you. To have a talk. You look as lovely as ever. Uh, your brother here, Leonid, says that I'm a tight-fisted peasant. But I don't take any notice of that. The only thing I want is for you to have faith in me as you did before. Merciful God, my father was your father's serf, and your grandfather's too. But you did so much for me in the past that, oh, I forget everything and I'd love you as if you were my sister. Oh, I just can't sit still. This happiness is too much for me. You can laugh at me. My dear bookcase. <laughs> my own little table. You know, old man, he died while you were away. Yes, I know. May the kingdom of heaven be hers. Anastasia died too. And Petrushka's left me. He's working for the police in town. I feel like I'd like to tell you something nice. I'll have to go in a moment. However, I could tell you just a few words. You know, of course, that the chariot is going to be sold to pay your debts. Uh, the auction is going to take place the 22nd of August. You can sleep in peace, my dear. There's a way out. This is my plan. Your estate is only 20 miles from town. The railway line is not far away. Uh, now, if your chariot orchard and the land along the river are divided into plots and leased out for summer residents, you'll have a yearly income of nearly 25,000 rubles. You'll charge the tenants at least 25 rubles a year for a plot. I don't quite understand you. If you advertise that. now, you won't have a spot of land left, left by autumn. You're saved after all. Of course, the place will have to be cleaned up a bit. All the old outbuildings will have to be torn down, as well as this house, which is no good to anybody. Uh, the old chariot should, should be cut down, too. Cut down? My dear man, forgive me. You don't seem to understand. If there's one thing really outstanding in the whole county, it's our chariot orchard. <coughs> the only outstanding thing about that orchard is that it's very large. It only produces the crop every other year, and then there's nobody to buy it. This orchard is actually mentioned in the encyclopedia. <laughs> if you can think clearly about it, or come to a decision, that the cherry orchard and the whole estate as well will be, sell will be sold by auction. You must decide. There's no other way out. In the old days, 40 or 50 years ago, the cherries were dried. Preserved, marinated, made into jam, and sometimes be quiet. And sometimes whole cartloads of dried cherries were sent to Moscow and Kharkov. The money they fetched, and the dried cherries in those days were soft, juicy, sweet, tasty. They knew how to do it then. They had a recipe. And where is that recipe now? We're forgotten. No one can remember it. Up until just recently, there were only gentry and peasants living in the country. But now there are all these summer residents. And probably in the course of the next 20 years, these people will multiply tremendously. <coughs> At present, they only drink tea and veranda, but they might start cultivating the plots of land and and then your cherry orchard will be gay with life and wealth and luxury. What nonsense! Here are two telegrams for you, Mama. They're from Paris. I'm finished with Paris. Do you know, you are uh, this old bookcase. Uh, a week ago, I pulled out the bottom drawer and I found some figures burnt in the wood. It was made exactly a hundred years ago. What 
çizgi güzel ha? We have to celebrate its anniversary. And the inanimate object, of course, but still the bookcase. Yes, this is a valuable piece of furniture. My dear venerable bookcase, I salute you. <laughs> you, for more than a hundred years, you have devoted yourself to the highest ideals of goodness and justice. For a hundred years, you have never failed to fill our family with an urge to useful work. Several generations of us have put their faith in a better future, fortified by your silent call. You have fostered in us the idea of... Yes! You're just the same, Lydia. I popped into the white pocket. I popped into the middle pocket. It's time for me to go. Would you care to take your medicine now? His honor came to see us in Holy Week and ate a half a bucket full of salt cucumbers. What did she say? He's been muttering for the last three years. We're accustomed to it. It's his age. A foot. Forgive me, Charlotte. I have had the time to say, how do you do? You are permitted to kiss a lady's hand. You'd want to kiss her elbow next and <laughs> then her shoulder. <laughs> I'm unlucky today. <laughs> Do a trick for us, Charlotte. There's no need to now. I want to go to bed. I'll see you in three weeks' time. Meanwhile, goodbye. Uh, time to go. Uh, I don't want to go, really. I just. <laughs> if you can think over this question of, of country villas and come to a decision, uh, let me know, and I'll, I'll get you a loan at 50000 Think it over seriously. Will you ever go away? I'm going. What a whore! I beg your pardon. His father is precious fiance. Father is going to marry him. Please don't say anything uncalled for, Uncle dear. Well, Varya, I shall be very glad. He's a good man. I've finished my coffee now. We can all go and rest. You put on the wrong pair of trousers again. What am I to do with you? <laughs> Anya's asleep. Look, the sun's up already. It's warmer. How wonderful the trees are. The orchard's all white. You haven't forgotten, Yuba, how straight this long avenue is. Quite straight, just like a ribbon. It glitters on moonlit nights. Oh, my childhood, my innocent childhood. I used to sleep in this nursery, and I woke up happy every morning. All, all white. Oh, my orchard. After the dark, stormy, or stormy autumn and the cold winter, you're young and joyous again. If only this burden could be taken from me. If only I could forget my past. Yes, and now the orchard is going to be sold. They are debts, strange as it seems. Look, there's Mother walking through the orchard in a white dress. Where? It is her. Bless you, Mama dear. Oh, it's no one. I, I only imagined it. Oh, over there, you see, there's a small white tree and it's bending over. You've it often dreamed of it. You've often dreamed of it. I was told to wait until the morning, but it was too much for my patience. Piotr Trofimov, I used to be tutor to your Grisha. Have I really changed so much? Your Grisha, my little I tell boy. you to wait until tomorrow, Piotr. Grisha, my son. There's <laughs> nothing for it, Mama. It was God's will. No, no, you were. <laughs> My little boy lost, drowned. What for? What for, my friend? Oh. Oh. Arnie's asleep. 
there, and here I am shouting and making a scene. Well, Piotr, how is it you've lost your good looks? Why have you aged so? A peasant woman in that train called me that moth-eaten gent. In those days, <laughs> you were quite a boy, a nice young student. Now you, your hair is thin, and you wear glasses. Are you still a student? I expect I shall be a student to the end of my days. <laughs> well, go to bed now. You've aged too, Leonid.
something unpleasant happened here. You know there are only a few old servants living in the servants' quarters. Well, they let some tramps sleep there, and I didn't say anything about it. But sometime afterwards, I heard some gossip. People said I had ordered them to be fed on nothing but dried peas. Anitka? She's asleep. Come along. I'm 
fate treats me absolutely without mercy, just like a storm treats a small ship. Why should I wake up this morning and suddenly see a colossal spider sitting on my chest, like this? Or supposing I pick up a jug to have a drink of kvass? There's sure to be something frightful inside it, such as a cockroach. May I trouble you for a word, Adolfia Theodorovna? All right, carry on. I'd very much like to speak to you alone. Very well, Mom. Only, will you bring me my little cape first? It's hanging inside the wardrobe. It's rather chilly out here. Very well, I'll bring it. Now I know what to do with my revolver. <laughs> Twenty-two disasters. Between you and me, a stupid fellow. I hope to God he won't shoot himself. I've got sort of anxious worrying all the time. I came to live here with the master and mistress when I was still a little girl, you see. Now I've gotten out of the way of living the simple life. My hands are as white as the babies. Keep telling you! 
bunch of debt they decide to have the village, you'll be able to borrow money, as much money as you like. There is a summer visitors. Captain 
by her for a long time yourself. <laughs> well, I'm quite willing. She's a nice girl. I've been offered a job in the bank. Six thousand a year. Have you heard? Indeed I have. You'd better stay where you are. Will you please put it on, sir? It's so chilly. You are a nuisance. You went off this morning and never told me you were going.
is going to be sold, just consider that. Just think.
away. Leave everything. I'd have gone into a convent. A beautiful life. Of course, a student like you has to be clever. How plain you become, Kyocho. How much older you look. The only thing I can't bear is to be without work. You must be doing something all the time. Yepahoro's broken a billiard cue. <laughs> Why is Yepahoro here? Who allowed him to play billiards? I can't understand these people. Don't tease her, Pyoja. Don't you see she's upset already? She's too much of a busybody. She wouldn't leave us alone the whole summer, Anya nor me. She was afraid we might fall in love with each other. Why should she want? Besides, we are above love. And I suppose I'm below love. Oh, why is Leah in back? I only want to know whether the estate's sold or not. Honestly, I feel I could shriek out loud this very moment. Help me, Pilcher. Say something. Speak. Isn't it all the same whether the estate sold today or not? It's finished and done with long ago. For once in your life, you must look truth straight in the face. What truth? You can see where the truth is and where it isn't. But I seem to have lost my power of vision. You're able to solve all your problems in a resolute way. But tell me, my dear boy, isn't that because you're young? You've a more serious nature than we have, but do consider our position carefully. Do be generous and spare me. I was born here. My father and mother lived here. And my grandfather, too. And I love this house. I can't conceive life without the cherry orchard. If it really has to be sold, then sell me with it. You know, my son was drowned here. Have pity on me, my dear, dear friend. You know that I sympathize with you with all my heart. But you must say it differently. Differently. There's such a weight on my mind today. You can't imagine. This place is too noisy. And I can't go to my room for fear of being alone and quiet. Don't blame me, Yoja. I love you as, as if you were my own child. I would willingly let Anya marry you, but my dear boy, you must finish your course first. You don't do anything. Fate seems to drive you from one place to another. And you should do something about that beard. Make it grow somehow. <laughs> I don't want to be a dandy. That telegram's from Paris. I get one every day. Yesterday and today. That savage is ill. Again. He wants me to forgive him. He implores me to return. Really. I do feel I ought to go to Paris. <coughs> Stay here for a bit. You're looking very stern, Pioja. What am I to do? He's ill and lonely. And who's there to take care of him? I give him his medicine at the proper time. And anyway, why should I hide it? I love him. Of course I do. I love him. I do. It's a millstone around my neck, and I'm going to the bottom with it. But I love him, and I can't live without him. Don't think badly of me, Pioja. Don't speak. Don't say anything. Please, please forgive me. Forgive my frankness, but that man's been robbing you. No, no, you mustn't talk He's like that. He's a cad. You're the only one who doesn't know it. He's a petty-minded cad, a worthless cad. You're 26 or 27 years old, but you're still like a schoolboy in prep school. You ought to be a man at your age. You ought to understand people who are in love. You ought to be able to love, to fall in love. Yes, yes. You're not. Sure. Just make a 
located in their immoral sides. It's so boring here. The food they give us in the kitchen is abominable. Then there's this fear who keeps walking around muttering. If you go, take me with you. Please do. Allow me to ask you to dance. Quickly, for God's sake! I haven't had anything to eat all day! 
estate where my father and grandfather were serfs, where they weren't even admitted to the kitchen. I must be dreaming. Ah, oh, it's all my imagination. I shall stay the whole winter in Kharkov. 
up something new. It's all going to stay. Incidentally, as we're not likely to meet again, I'd like to give you a bit of advice. Stop throwing your arms about. Try to get rid of that habit of making wide, sweeping gestures. Yes, and all this talk, too, about building villas, these calculations about summer residence, they're all sweeping gestures, too. When it all is said and done, I like you, despite it.
walls have seen my little treasure. You look radiant. Are you very glad? And life is just beginning, Mama. And so it is indeed. Everything's all right now. Before the cherry orchard was sold, everybody was so worried and upset, but as soon as it was all settled, everybody calmed down and felt quite cheerful. I'm an employee of a bank now, a financier, my pot in the red. And you, you are, you're looking better too. There's no doubt about it. Yes, my nerves are better, it's true. I'm sleeping better too. Take my things out, Yasha. It's time. My little girl. We'll soon be seeing each other again. I'm going to Paris. I shall live there on the money which your grandmama mama sent in Yaroslav sent to us to buy the estate. God bless grandmama. And that money won't last long either. You'll come back soon, Mama. Quite soon. And then I will pass my exams and I'll study and work with you. During the long summer evenings, we'll read lots of books together, and a new wonderful world will open up before us. I'm coming back, Mama. I'll come back, my precious. Happy Charlotte, she's singing.